jersey again today. This one is a little more oriented for the ladies, but will work for anyone. We've got a lot of crazy stuff going on in the world today. Lot of confusion, people are being displaced, and it's pretty easy for those people to fall through the cracks, get taken advantage of. You can't stay where you are, have to go someplace else. Next thing you know, you are in the back of a van and some guy in an Adidas tracks you and saying he'll hold your passport for safekeeping. Elsewhere, people are getting detained for various questionable reasons, loaded into trucks and buses and driven off who knows where. It's a scary thing to contemplate happening to us, our partners or children. But we are rational and scientific people, so we break that fear down into manageable pieces. Build a realistic threat model and address it in a rational, scientific way. Today, we are going to look at one very small, very specific part of that very large and complex threat model, physical actual legal restraint. People who aren't legally allowed to restrain you against your will, doing just that. For most people, being restrained this way really isn't a high probability threat. But for some people it is, and for lots of us, it's nice to know what we should do in that situation just for peace of mind. There's a lot of tutorials on picking and bypassing handcuffs, so I'm not going to cover that today. It's not that hard, but the reality is, these days, if you are restrained by someone other than the police, 99% of the time, this is what they're going to use. Zip ties or flexi cuffs. It's just as easy to get zip ties at a hardware store as rope or duct tape, and it's a whole lot more convenient. And anyone can order flexi cuffs online, so they're starting to show up and are something to note about and be prepared for. It. Flexi cuffs are basically just two large zip ties injection molded as one piece. They work the same, and everything you can do with flexi cuffs, you can do with zip ties. So we are just going to focus on flexi cuffs today, so I don't have to demo everything twice. Now there are quite a number of videos out there showing dudes breaking thin zip ties or slowly sorting through these with their bootlaces. Which is super cool, don't get me wrong. But most of the girls I know who might get shoved in the back of a van or tied up in a motel room aren't going to be busting out of these and don't wear combat boots, so that's not all helpful. But you should go watch one of those videos so you know how to do it and have it as an option. Zip ties are basically just a simple ratchet mechanism that allows a plastic strip with notches cut into it to go one way, but not the other by engaging with a paw. All we need to do is slip that paw up, and that plastic wrenching strip can go the other way and place our wrists. I have a number of specialized sear tools. This is the cover companion from Lockpick and Lawyer. I have a whole bunch of even smaller ones from searpick.com. I'll put in the description. But of course, unless you are super paranoid like me, you aren't going to carry this. No problem.
You can also use the underwire from your bra, wire from a clothes hanger, anything thin and stiff really. Now, if you are in a situation where there's more than one of you restrained, or if you have flexi cuffs or on your wrists and ankles, you are actually in luck. Well, as lucky as you can expect to be under the circumstances. Watch. Flexi cuffs can, can unlock another, and with any luck, you and your new girlfriend can run off into the sunset. One big advantage of this approach is unlike cutting and sawing, it doesn't damage the restraint. If you get free and are in a situation where you can't get past the next barrier, you can put them back on and no one will be the wiser while you buy your time and wait for your opening. If you saw for them, and can't get past the door, whatever they were string you with next won't be so easy. Last is a little trick I have not seen anyone else do, and I would not even try this unless I was fighting for my life. And even then, as I've discussed in earlier videos, my go-to is my legs and a triangle choke. I have to force the arm in and then apply the triangle choke. But you can use the restraint for Ezekiel Cho, otherwise known as Soda Jimmy. There are a bunch of slick setups for this and many variations, but that's something you're going to have to learn from someone more qualified. Although that choke offers an enormous amount of leverage, I'll be honest with you. Even if I caught a guy slipping from behind, I would not put odds on my being able to finish him this way. They can reach back and grab my hair, gouge my eyes, maybe break my fingers. But if you have more upper body strength and put in a mag time to practice this, or many variations on Ezekiel chokes, it might be an option. It works with flexi cuffs, handcuffs, or rope. Even if you can't get one hand free, all that means is you have to go over their head and get their arm in for the choke. If they've made the mistake of letting you get your hands in front of you, giving you a little distance between your wrists, or it's even just loose enough to slide up your arm a bit, you can assume a more offensive posture either an Ezekiel choke or maybe even a necktie vari variation that lets you use your legs and keep your head out of reach. You can even set it up with a headbutt if they are really not on top of things. <laughs> For me, I had to wait for my opportunity and do everything I could to avoid anything hands-on like that. Precisional dominance means controlling whether or not the fight even happens. Life is not a movie, and I'm a very small person. This is Hail Mary play, not a realistic play plan. But it might be for others. 
Okay, that's how to get out of flexi cups. There's a few tricks for some of the more exotic brands, but these are the most common. Remember, only perfect practice makes perfect. Don't get the idea you can just watch this and then be able to do it when you need to. Get yourself a couple of zip ties and flexi cups to practice with. Once you can do it quickly and smoothly three times in a row with a few different tools, you own that skill for life and can show it to others. It's a great activity for couples and friends over a few six packs or a box of wine. Ask me how I know. Make sure you leave a pair of wire cutters out and respect people's wishes and cut them off immediately if they can't do it themselves. No joking or playing around. That way, it's safe, loads of fun, and you never know. In this crazy world we are living in, knowing this might just end up getting you or someone else out of a bad spot. That's it for today. I hope you like this topic. Until next time, if I can do it, anyone can do it.